morning to you, Dave. Good morning, Mark. Good morning. Let's get I'm after excited, it. Excited, excited to be uh, back with you guys for a Falls Count Anywhere Friday. It's going to be a fun, uh, fun night. And Mark, we're going to have a great time tonight on Rampage. Man, I know we are. I'm looking forward to it. Tony, it's it's, uh, it's getting exciting, man. I mean, the, you you look at the ratings spiked and went up. I mean, you you got to be happy. Oh, gosh, I'm so happy about it. The ratings were awesome for this week's Dynamite. Uh, over a million fans uh, and a great number in the demo tuned in. And it was a great show, and I think it's been a run of great shows. And uh, it's all boding really well for a big revolution pay-per-view next weekend and should be a great rampage on TNT tonight at 10 o'clock. We have a really big card and uh, a lot of exciting things happening as we get closer to revolution. You know, Tony, there's so much to talk about because we have revolution coming up next weekend, dynamite from this past Wednesday and what's going to happen on rampage tonight, uh, 10 p.m. Eastern time on TNT back in its normally scheduled time. And the, and the and the thing that I got to start off with, which and you know this, we've talked about it a lot. Last March, uh, to me, the the match of the year for 2021 was the match between Dr. Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa. You know, in front of no fans. You know, back in March of 2021, and that lights out unsanctioned match. And here we are uh, tonight on uh, Rampage, the contract signing, which should be an amazing world championship match because now it means something. That win that Thunder Rosa got, not on the books because it wasn't a sanctioned match. So can't wait for this contract signing tonight, almost a year after their historic match in March. Absolutely. Uh, it, it's going to be an awesome match at Revolution, and tonight we will see the contract signing for Dr. Britt Baker defending the Women's World Championship versus Thunder Rosa. And like you said, Dave, it's a rematch of the Lights Out match at the St. Patrick's Day Slam at almost a year in the making. So I'm, I'm very excited for it, and we'll get a sneak preview of that tonight on AEW Rampage. And a lot of big things happening on Rampage tonight. Uh, I believe you guys just talked to the great Keith Lee. Yep, he was great. He was great. He is great. He's a great guy. Unbelievable. And an awesome interview, awesome person. And uh, I love talking to him about wrestling, and I love talking to him about football. Um, but he knows a lot about both. And uh, I really like Keith a lot, and it's just shaping up to be a great group of wrestlers in that Face of the Revolution ladder match. We've already seen Keith Lee. We saw Wardlow in the match. Powerhouse Will Hobbs is in the match. And then there was a question this week on Dynamite, is it going to be another Haas in the match with number 10 of the Dark Order? Or is Ricky Starks going to break that streak and put more of a finesse wrestler, a technical wrestler in the match? And with Starks' win, uh, now it's really shaping up to be a great field. Team Taz has a little bit of an advantage. We saw that uh, with a face-off with Keith Lee. And now tonight on Rampage, we'll find out who's next to enter the match. It's going to be a great match, Orange Cassidy versus Anthony Bowens. And uh, i got to say, Anthony Bowens has been on a roll in AEW in particular. Both of the acclaimed have. And Anthony Bowens in particular has had some great matches with some of the top stars, wrestlers like Brian Danielson, John Moxley, Jungle Boy. And for him to be in the ring now with Orange Cassidy, it's another big match, and it's a huge opportunity for both guys, Bowens and Orange. Well, I'm going to tell you, Tony, like uh, one of the things that, that I'm really looking forward to uh, just like Dave, is that contract signing. Um, there, with Jamie Hayter uh, and Rebel around, it always seems like um, Thunder is battling uphill. And she's got a, she's got a lot of people to, to deal with, but she's never had any problem doing it. But, like, I, I'm, I'm wondering, how's, how's – how is Thunder going to uh, – is there going to be rules to keep uh, everybody in line, or is Thunder just going to have to keep fighting uphill? Well, it's a good question. Uh, we'll have to see. Uh, I think, you know, now Mercedes Martinez has come to Thunder Rosa's defense, and yep. so, you know, now uh, it seems like a little bit more even of a fight. Um, you know, Jamie Hayter 
and Mercedes Martinez both, uh, you know, have really uh, been protecting Britt Baker at times. But now we saw Mercedes Martinez, uh, you know, ended up getting the shaft from Britt. So we'll see. I think uh, one thing that I'm sure is going to be the case is that it's going to be a great match at Revolution. So I'm, I'm really excited for that. You know, when when I look at that match, how hard was it for you? Because, you know, in the world of pro wrestling, it moves so fast, it's hard to have patience. How difficult was it to keep these two away from each other for almost a whole year? Here we are talking really about diff- a match. <laughs> it, difficult, right? It's hard, yeah. I mean, there's you know, other than uh, crossing pads here and there, I mean, they really have been completely apart for the year and there have been a couple teases moments like in the tbs tournament um along the way but yeah absolutely it's been very intentional that i've tried to keep brit and thunder rosa apart for this whole year and uh building up to a big rematch at revolution and i'm really excited about it and uh it's emblematic of the quality of the card which you know if people really take a look at it if you follow AEW. Uh, you'll know these are all big matches that we've been building up towards, and this is a huge payoff in many cases. And if you don't follow AEW, then uh, it's a great time to start because going into a, such a big pay-per-view, uh, there's so many ways to catch up on the stories online uh, and obviously watching the TV. Next week after Rampage, there's also going to be the Countdown to Revolution, which will give people an opportunity to see firsthand for the hardcore fans to learn even more about the matches going in and great chance to expose people to what's happening on the card. And yeah, it absolutely has been an intentional decision uh, for the past year to keep Rosa and Britt apart as they were on different paths. Uh, One thing Keith Lee said on our interview just a few minutes ago, Tony, is that with all that he's accomplished in wrestling, uh, what we're going to see at Revolution will be his first ever ladder match. So we're actually going to see a little history in Keith Lee's career uh, next Sunday night. Yeah, it's very cool. And uh, I think with so many big, powerful men in the match, uh, there's going to be some really exciting stuff. There's all kinds of possibilities. It's going to be the most power that we've ever had packed into one match, I think. And now we'll add another great wrestler tonight. It's either going to be Anthony Bowens or Orange Cassidy joining this great field at Revolution. I'm looking forward to it. Dave, I want to know where you're going to get the ladder from. That's it's going to have to be reinforced. And if if I need to climb on, on the roof or do something in my house, I'm going to need one of those type of ladders. <laughs> yeah, we have a specially reinforced ladder for this match. And uh, when the pay-per-view is over, Mark, I'm going to lend it to you for the next 364 days until next year's Face of the Revolution. <laughs> <laughs> then I have to bring it back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just need it back next year for Revolution. But but if you can just wait uh, until after next weekend, I can get you a ladder you can use at home. I, I, I awesome. don't know, Tony. My wife's going to like that. Change I, I those light know. bulbs. I, I don't know about that. Tony, please don't do that. I just can't picture <laughs> Mark Henry outside of his house like using that ladder to clean out gutters. I ju- I, I, that is a scary sight for me to see Mark Henry on top of a ladder. So maybe... Just keep it in the storage room, Tony, until next year, please. Okay, we can do that. But uh, <laughs> if you change your mind, it's always here on hand, ready. And, uh, you know, that's that, that's some of what we have on tap. It's just going to be uh, a great card at Revolution. Um, we've also got tonight on Rampage the TNT title match. Sammy Guevara defending yep. the TNT championship against Andrade El Idolo. And that should be a great match. Um, I'm I'm really excited for this with the all the abilities of these two great wrestlers and uh, the tension that's been building up. I think this is a great great match, and I'm I'm really looking forward to that one. It'll it'll be a great way to kick things off tonight on TNT at 10 o'clock. We'll go right into that championship match, and it's going to be a jam packed hour of wrestling at 10 Eastern, 9 p.m. Central, and 10 p.m. on the West Coast for Rampage tonight, late night. Uh, on TNT. Also tonight, we're going to see another uh, five-minute rookie challenge from Serena Deeb. And Tony, 
you know, we had a special edition with the Masters class with myself, Mark, and Tommy Dreamer that you can hear on the Busted Open podcast. And we talked about some of the more underutilized talent throughout the years in pro wrestling. Serena D being one. And, and how, what a great addition to this women's division is Serena Deep and, and to be able to feature her each and every week on Rampage. Yeah, she's, she's been tremendous. I think uh, she's been on Dynamite and Rampage now doing these uh, rookie challenges, and uh, we've seen her just dominate. And tonight uh, we'll see if that trend continues or if Kayla Sparks can go the five minutes with Serena Deeb. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Kayla's a great young wrestler, too, and uh, I think she's probably the toughest uh, one, you know, in this rookie challenge. Uh, if anybody's going to last the five minutes with Serena, it could be her. So that'll be interesting to watch tonight. Um, and speaking of uh, dominance and dominant wrestlers, we've also got uh, Wardlow wrestling tonight. Wardlow taking on Nick Comoroto. And speaking of the big guys and the big hosses, I think this is a great way for Wardlow to get ready for the face of the revolution match. You know, often Wardlow has the size and power advantage in a big way over his opponents. And this is a match where it's a little bit closer here. And in the face of the revolution match, Wardlow is going to be matched up against some big guys we know with powerhouse Hobbs, with Keith Lee, of course, and... Uh, I think getting in the ring tonight with Nick Comoroto, it's a great test. And if Nick Comoroto wins the match tonight, I am absolutely going to have to give him a qualifier opportunity also to get into the match. So uh, it's a big match for both guys, for Wardlow and Comoroto, and great to see the big guys battle it out tonight. On Rampage, just really a loaded show tonight, top to bottom, emblematic of what we try to do on Friday nights on Rampage. Um but uh, also, so much happening in the next week. I think we got a great show tonight, and then we're officially on the road to Revolution. And the card is shaping up to be as good a pay-per-view card as you're going to see. And it got even stronger this past week with the addition of some huge matches like Brian Danielson versus John Moxley, Oof. like Chris Jericho versus Eddie Kingston. There's so much happening on this show. One thing I got to ask you about, because you're such a huge wrestling fan, first and foremost, and we were talking, Mark and I were talking about it earlier in the show, um, the promos, the mic work that we got on Dynamite this past Wednesday, uh, the, you know, the battle between Eddie Kingston and Jericho, like you said, is leading up to this matchup we're going to see at Revolution in Orlando next weekend and available on pay-per-view and BR Sports, but also MJF. And and it's unbelievable to me. Tommy and I were doing the show yesterday, and we were getting a gauge of all the people calling in. After what we heard from MJF on Wednesday, everybody that we talked to yesterday said that they're rooting for MJF in his dog collar match with CM Punk. It's amazing to me, Tony, that at the beginning of that segment, when MJF was going to the ring and when he was standing in the ring, that crowd was chanting CM Punk, and by the end of that segment, 10 minutes later, their mouths were wide open after what MJF had to say. Uh, amazing moment, I thought, on the microphone for MJF. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was an eye-opening experience, and we learned a lot from listening to MJF, and uh, it certainly gave us a new perspective on him, and what led him to this point and on this dog collar match, MJF versus CM Punk. And uh, I have heard that perspective from a lot of people, and I think that's awesome. And I believe a lot of wrestling fans in particular, a lot of Jewish wrestling fans reached out to me uh, expressing how cool it was for them to hear that on TV. Uh, there's definitely a big, uh, big group of fans that didn't obviously didn't know what MJF uh, was about to say, and like you said, I think they they weren't prepared for that, and it definitely changed the way people perceived him and perceived the match. And I think it's great. And 
talk about shades of gray in pro wrestling and three dimensional wrestling stories. Uh, so it, it adds that much more fuel to the fire as we approach Revolution pay per view next weekend for that dog collar match MJF versus CM Punk. Tonya, I have to give you this your flowers. Uh, I got a message from uh, one of my guys in New York. We call ourselves the Jew Boy Mafia. I'm the Sammy Davis Jr. in the group. And, and Andrew Goldstein says thank you for allowing uh, his Max's story to be told because – it's in this in this world of diversity that we talk about. Uh, it's not just black and white. Is is there's a lot of ethnicities that uh, people need to love and respect and 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 give pay homage to when the time arises and to be able to tell those stories. And he said that his his eyes welled up because he got picked on for being Jewish when he was a kid. Uh, going to school in New York, and uh, it just brought a lot of memories back to him. Um, it's good to, to have representation, so thank you. And that's that's not from me; that's from Andrew. Well, that's awesome. I mean, that's really cool to hear. Um, I haven't uh, ever gotten this kind of response to Dynamite before for anything we've done, and uh, I think MJF did inspire some people with what he said. Uh, and definitely added uh, more perspective and definitely added uh, more intrigue to the dog collar match at Revolution. So I was absolutely thrilled about that, and uh, the response is unlike anything we've ever gotten. And it was 125 episodes of Dynamite we've done now and never uh, had anything quite like that. So that was very cool. Just so you know, Jacob listened to it three times. He, <laughs> and, and he's a good barometer of fandom because I don't know if there's a, a bigger wrestling fan in the world. Um, he, he said that, like, did you hear it? Like, I, he, I didn't get this the first time. I, I listened, I got this. And, and that's what I feel like our fans are getting uh, at EW. They are going back and, and, and re-watching because they feel like I missed something. Like, I, I, I want to get something else out of it. That's, that's a wonderful thing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, I hope people are going back and watching on their DVRs over and over. That, that's awesome, and I'm sure TBS will love that. And uh, speaking of which, uh, there was just a lot of great, I think promos and a lot of great story on Dynamite this past week. Uh, you know, it's funny. I, I'm a big uh, nerd about statistics, and even in wrestling, there's statistics you can look at. You know, obviously the business side, ratings, very important. A lot of the fans now are interested in that too, and it is a barometer of success. It's a very important metric uh, for gauging how a promotion's doing and, and the viability of that company. Um, so there's another statistic, though, that also uh, is is uh, pretty interesting to look at, and that you know, in addition to the, the 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 business side of it, is looking at what the fans think of the shows. So sometimes I like to go to CageMatch.net, which is kind of like the IMDb of wrestling fans, yeah, I... <laughs> where they go rate the, rate the matches, rate the wrestlers. And this is one of only two times these past three weeks on Dynamite. We've only had two streaks ever where we've had three shows over an eight, three straight shows that rated over an eight out of ten, and we are on that. And the last time we had that was the Road to Revolution 2020, the original Road to Revolution that people still talk about, what a great run of shows. And we're on another run like that now. It's the only other time this road, road to revolution, these past three dynamites, uh, only the second time we've ever had three straight dynamites that the fans ranked over an 8 out of 10. We had a lot where it was like an 8, a 7.8, an 8.5. But th remember, that consistency, um, I think, really says something. And uh, there's just a lot to look forward to. You know, I, I mentioned those matches, and there's so many great promos you know, I mentioned the great promos, and I think rightfully so. We jumped in to talk about C 
CM Punk and MJF, but we really spent very little time here talking, and I think it speaks to the quality of what's happening in AEW on Wednesdays and Fridays and what's going to happen next weekend on the Revolution pay-per-view on March 6th on Sunday, um, that we've spent very little time, if any, talking about, you know, uh, Eddie Kingston versus Chris Jericho and John Moxley versus Brian Danielson. <laughs> no, and it's- <laughs> and then, of course, Hangman Page and Adam Cole, I thought, had a great moment uh, to kick the show off at the end of the Battle Royale um, when Hangman Page came out and put a new twist on story time. You know, we're so used to story time with Adam Cole. We got story time with Adam Page, and it was a very different story, I think, than Adam Cole would have told us. So uh, there's, a, there's a lot happening in AEW, and all those moments and a lot more really got me going on Wednesday. And, and Tony, we just have about two minutes, but, you know, so much is going on in AEW. Oh, yeah, by the way, uh, you know, Buddy Matthews this past Wednesday on Dynamite. So, you know, don't want to forget about a uh, pretty big debut on Wednesday night. No, absolutely. I mean, it's great to have Buddy Matthews in the House of Black, and uh, it was a great match. Penta and Pac uh, looked tremendous in the match, and we'll have to see how the Death Triangle responds now that the House of Black is three strong. Uh, a lot of exciting stuff happening in AEW. Again, Rampage tonight at 10 Eastern and 9 Central, 10 on the West Coast. Please don't miss Friday Night Rampage. And I am going to tell everyone right now, you definitely will not want to miss Wednesday Night Dynamite next week. Uh, I've been talking a lot about a big announcement in the world of pro wrestling. Uh, Not only is there going to be a lot of great wrestling on the show, a casino tag royale, 15 tag teams uh, entering into the ring, a little bit different than the battle royal we saw this week, kind of more of almost a rumble-style format. Uh, we've got Hangman Page teaming with the Dark Order against Adam Cole, Fish, and O'Reilly. I'm going to add a lot more to the card, but I'm going to promise you guys right now, I have a huge announcement coming, and nobody knows what it is. Uh, it's going to be something very important in the wrestling business. Um, it's it's not just uh, one particular piece of talent. It's something very special, and I'm really excited about it, and I believe it's going to be something we'll be in position to announce on Wednesday, so I'm pretty excited about that. Well, thank you for saying that here. I'm busting open, Tony. I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to Dynamite next week, but obviously looking forward to Rampage tonight, 10 p.m. Eastern Time on TNT. Uh, a lot going on, and of course, the Road to Revolution all the way on Sunday, March 6th, in Orlando on Pay Per View and BR Sports. Tony, thank you so much for the time this morning. Thank you, Dave, and I'll see you tonight, Mark, when it's time for the main event. Let's go. Talk to you tomorrow right here.